Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Chaz with Side Hustle Network, and in today's video, I'm going to go do one of my favorite arbitrage methods, which is buying products from Facebook Marketplace, so local pickups from people, and then flipping those onto eBay. And if you're new here to the channel, my name is Charles. My wife, Trista, and I do this full time. We also run a prepping and shipping company for Amazon eBay sellers as well. So one of my best tips for doing Facebook Marketplace pickups is number one, make sure it is worth your time and right now worth your gas to go pick up. You don't want to waste 20 minutes driving somewhere for a $10 profit. So what I personally do is I do my best if I'm going to be driving out anywhere that's past 10 minutes, 15 minutes, somewhere in that range. What I'm trying to do is schedule multiple pickups at the same time within the same general area. So days like today worked out perfect where I'm on my way down to our office and I just on the way I happened to find a pair of shoes that I wanted to buy. I locked in the time and the location for that pickup and then I filtered down my marketplace around that same area and then also scheduled two more pickups. So we have three pickups total today. It's going to be two pair of shoes and a set of calculators. And the goal with this video is not to just go pick them up and say, ooh, look what I bought. It's to show you the entire process of doing my pickups, taking them to the office, cleaning up what I need to clean up, doing the photos, doing the eBay listing. We're going to show you that whole process here in this video. And then at the end of the video, we'll break down what some potential rough profits could be out of this load. So second tip in this video, if you are dealing with picking product up off Facebook marketplaces, be safe guys if you are not comfortable meeting up with these strangers do not do it and if you do do it you want to make sure you are always in a public setting personally i'm a fan of going to you know walmart parking lots gas stations somewhere that's always public do not go straight to people's homes there are so many things that can go wrong so just play it safe always do pickups in a public area all right pickup number one nike air max torch fours they are in used, slightly beat up condition, but the sold comps on these, especially for a size 14, are between $50 and $60. So for $10, I have room to undercut the active sellers and sell for 40 if I need to. Second pickup for 80 bucks, got Air Griffey Max Ones. Look at these buttes. Brand spanking new. Talked them down to 80 bucks. Should sell between 175 and 200. And pickup number three, scored two sealed TI-83 Plus calculators for $30 each. These should sell for roughly about $70 each. So now we are here at my office slash warehouse. I'm going to take these all in and show you the whole process of getting these photoed, listed, how much I'm going to price them at, and roughly how much profit we can make. And in a turn of events, this was pickup number four. I only had three scheduled. I got here to the office, started processing some stuff, and got a message back from somebody literally about five minutes down the road. So went and picked these up. I did pay up. Uh, showed up. This is a 13-year-old uh, kid who's out there hustling, so I gave him an extra 20 bucks. So with the extra 20 bucks, my buy cost now is $40 uh, per pair. This pair, probably not going to make a ton on its pair of uh, Vapor Max. The new ones, the solds are about $150. Um, they are not in great shape, so probably not going to make a ton on there. Uh, maybe 10 15 20 bucks on the high end as far as profit goes. Uh, these Retro 12s, should be able to make a decent amount on. New ones are selling for about 150 to 200. The only active listing right now for a 7Y is for 125 used. I'm gonna undercut that, um, obviously I have some margins. So uh, get these listed as well. So we had four total pickups for the day. So now that we're here, done with pickups, time to actually do the work, which is get these cleaned up, photoed and listed. You guys can see a little bit of our warehouse setup. We've got photos um, stations set up for clothing where we can hang inside that box and then set, uh, Jimmy rig this little thing together for shoes. Uh, and then our main shipping station right here. So now that the fun part of going and finding this stuff is done, we get to do the real work. I'll show you the process. Now, when it comes to doing the real work in running an eBay-based business, you have a few different steps. Step one is going to be the prep in situations like this where we have very dirty shoes. We need to clean those. With new items in the box especially, there is no prep involved because those are good to go. Step two is going to be taking the item photos. Step three is some type of inventory management. So that's typically assigning a SKU to these and then putting them in an organized fashion. We use boxes. Step four is going to be actually listing 
listing the item. I'm gonna cover all of that for you right now. Now for the prep on shoes specifically, it's usually just a little bit of light cleaning that we're going to do. Unfortunately, it's actually been a few days since I recorded the first half of this video. Unfortunately, now that I'm actually looking at these up close, these I probably should have passed on, to be honest. They are extremely worn down. We've got cracking in the bottoms. Um, we can see the insides. That's all stuff that I just was quickly on the go. Complete newbie mistake, but just goes to show you, um, even for those of us who have been in the game for a long time, you can still make mistakes. That probably should not have been a deal I made, but for 10 bucks, um, I could probably still sell them for 25-ish. Maybe get my 10 bucks back off of that. And that's just the point of me doing this video right now, just be completely transparent with everything that we do, including sometimes making some bad buys. Now, as far as how to clean shoes, there's a lot of different ways. A lot of people, including us, recommend this one, which is Grandma's Secret Sneaker Cleaner. You can find the link to this from Amazon in the description. And then a few basic tools, magic erasers work wonders, especially when we're talking about little tiny scuff marks on smooth um, textures like this. That magic eraser gets that stuff off super easy some type of little scrub brush. And then one of the best tools you can get is actually just gonna be a basic toothbrush, especially when we're talking about getting inside of uh, creases and corners like that. So for something like these Jordans, I put just a tiny bit of that sneaker cleaner right here because it's just a little bit of a scuff mark. And you can see that came right off. So I'm just lightly gonna go around the shoe and look for any of those marks. All right, now for these bad boys, here's the before. I'm gonna take them over to the sink, scrub them up, see what we can come up with. In a turn of events, I thought maybe it's best to sell these with no insoles uh, because of how bad that is. So I pulled on this a little bit. I'm like, that feels thicker than it should be. This is actually someone else's insert, which means the inserts, the insoles on the inside are actually perfect. Because we could just pull these out. That's disgusting. Should have worn gloves. But at least we have a nice clean inside now. And here's the difference. I did not spend too much time doing any type of deep cleaning, which would have been all the way down in these creases, taking a lot more time. But we're actually not going to be able to sell them for as much as I was hoping for, so I'm not gonna spend too much time cleaning. Being that we have good insoles now, that actually will increase the value a little bit. They cleaned up pretty well. That was just a light scrubbing with that sneaker cleaner. Bottoms turned out a lot nicer as well. Does not change the fact that they're extremely worn and cracking on this side, but we'll make sure we take up close photos and put that in the description. Next step is photos. So I'll just show you guys a basic overview of what we rigged together. So this is just one of those four or five tier um, metal shelving units that is on, uh, well, it doesn't come with wheels, but you can get casters for it. And then on Amazon, there's these LED panel lights, um, links, in, links in the description, by the way, for all the stuff that we're gonna mention in the video. So the sweet part is when we bought these, we were trying to figure out how we're gonna zip tie them or whatever. And there's actually two up top here, but when they got here, I realized they're actually magnetic. So it worked out beautifully for this type of setup. So we can change these positions depending on what how much lighting we need on certain angles. Then it's not necessary for the extras, but I also added in just another LED panel light. And I'll show you why, because on the front view here, it's a great shot, right? But if I turn my front light off, you can see that little bit of a difference. And I feel like in the world of eBay with competition, you've got to make your photos stand out, which means every little detail you can add in is going to help. So the shelves are not actually that wide. So all we did is we just added cardboard underneath to extend that out, which gives us a big platform here. This is all temporary. This is kind of like a prototype we're trying to put together. So we'll come, we'll come up with something a lot more sturdy. Then for the actual white background, it's just a PVC type material, uh, which is nice because it's really easy to clean off, especially when you're dealing with used products. Um, that can get pretty scuffed up and dirty. So I make sure I wipe this down after every use. That's pretty much it as far as the photo supplies go. Um, as far as the rest of it goes for supplies, we use boxes instead of bins uh, as far as clear totes. And then we also poly bag all of our shoes as we um, go through and skew them and organize them. So poly bags, these are a 12 by 15, which fits most shoes. Then tied in after the photos is also that whole skewing and inventory management that I told you about. So to get my computer up here, a lot of people on Instagram ask, it's just a monitor mount arm attached onto this. And then of course, also on Amazon, bought this stand 
for a laptop. And that kind of completed the whole setup that I personally was looking for where I can have ease of access at my computer without having to go walk over somewhere or drag a big cart with me. So that was a perfect addition. So once I have the product up here, I'm gonna enter it into my spreadsheet. I just built kind of a fresh one here so it's not completely accurate as far as numbers and data but I'm gonna put in just a basic item descriptor. So on here we have Nike Torch 4, which is the item, and then this is going to be the Nike style and color code. So that way when I go to list, which I do for my computer, I can easily copy and paste that number to go find my research. I also just like to keep track of everything going on. So I put in my supplier quantity. A lot of these are gonna be one-offs, but if I do have quantity, such as this one was a uh, quantity of five, I can put that in there. Buy cost, and then once it sells, I'm gonna start tracking all of this. So I can put in my sold, it's gonna deduct out my fees. I could put in my shipping, then I'm left with what my actual profit was. And then also on here, this is Airtable, by the way. Um, so Airtable is nice because it has this nice clean sort by status um, setup that I like. So after the item is in the database, we're good to photo. Photos are all done. This box is too big to go in there, so that's going on my shoe rack inside the storage room. Um, so everything is skewed, that way when they sell, I know exactly where they are. Leaving that box there because I have many more products to get listed, so those will go in the same box and just repeat that pattern. Next step is to flip over to the computer side and show you guys exactly how I do my listing. Now for the listing. This is a current work in progress to find the best flow for what I'm doing, but for now this is what I've been using and I've gotten down to the point of at least 10 listings an hour from start to finish. So three different screen scenarios going on, one for doing the actual eBay listing, one for following my spreadsheet and entering that data, and another to create my white background, which we started using Photo Room, and it's been absolutely awesome. I'll show you what it does. By the way, this is not a sponsored video. We're just a huge fan of the Photo Room app. We've been using it for about a month and a half, and it's been creating some of the best white backgrounds that we've seen. The eBay white background remover works, but you'll you'll see the difference. So if you list from your phone, they actually have an app too, and the app is a lot quicker. I will give them that. So this desktop version will take a second. The app is pretty much immediate as far as re removing any type of background. So even though we take photos on a white background here, I'm just gonna drag and drop that photo, which is my main photo for the listing. I'm not doing this for every single photo. So you can see it literally just removed all the background all at once, crispy clean. I actually can click on this, make that a little bit bigger. Another cool part about this is going to adjust and then contrast, and I can adjust that just a little bit to bring out the darkness. I'll just over exaggerate it here, but it brings out the darkness just a little bit more within that shoe, so it makes it pop off that white background. The eBay background remover, again, it works, but so, I mean, you guys, if you've used it, you know, it creates these splotchy things you have to go in and fix. It's just, it's it's not efficient at all. This thing works 90% of the time. There are times it misses a little bit of my photo stand, which is a clear plastic, but to remove that, it's super easy. But to remove that, it's super quick and easy. You just hit edit, cut out. I'll put it back in just so you guys can see. Maybe it missed that one section. All I'm going to do is erase. You can do manual or guided. Come in here, boom, done. It's fixed and removed, hit save. I'm going to download this. Then when I get my listing going, I could just drag this into the listing. That's my main photo. And then I will drag the rest of my photos up into the actual eBay listing. So even though it's not a sponsored video by any means, we do have an affiliate for, with these guys that gets you 10% off. It was $60 for the entire year. I was hesitant myself to even use that until we started putting this to work and it's just been awesome. So if you wanna grab a hold of that, link in the description and you'll get yourself 10% off. And since you saw that I already input all my data ahead of time, I already have that code that I want to search by. So I can just copy this straight off my spreadsheet, come over to the eBay eBay tab and search. From there it brings me over to my listings and now I can start to do a little bit of research and pricing. I can see that a used pair is listed for 49 plus 12 shipping. Brand news are going for 150 plus. Obviously mine are in poor condition. So I'm going to filter this down a little bit more. I don't really care too much. Of course this plays a role in my research, but I don't care too much about what's currently listed. I care more so about the sell through. So let's see the price points on what is actually selling. This gives me a little bit more accurate data. So I can see a used pair went for 40, another one for 49 plus shipping. I'm assuming these would have been in great shape, but again, knowing ahead of time, I'm going to sell mine at a lower price point. I'm gonna take this one and see what is going on with this. 
Then I'm just gonna look through their photos and kind of get an idea on how good of condition theirs were in. And you can see they're in pretty solid shape. They have every bit of that rubber still intact. Mine is completely worn off. They're sold for 40, so I'm definitely gonna price mine around that $25 price point just to see if I can make a few bucks profit even. At this point, I just wanna get that 10 bucks back. So from here, I could just hit sell now because it's the same shoe. Every time you hit sell now on someone else's listing, you are gonna to have to change a few attributes that maybe they set in here. So now you can start to see where this setup has been pretty handy when i hit download it comes right here i can drag it straight into the listing here's the part where i still have a lot of improvements to do as far as getting this a little bit quicker i then open my files back up grab all the ones that i need drag those up drop them in and we're good to go and then i can work on my title so now i just double check that i have all my major keywords in my title which is going to be the brand the style the size etc I don't know if this is going to actually affect the algorithm or if it's just personal preference, but I like things in a certain order. So I'm usually putting that style code before the size. I have a men's size 14. So now we have Nike Air Max Torch 4 black casual shoe sneakers. Style code, men's size 14, all my heavy hitting keywords. Here's where I can put in that custom SKU, which is going to be CL68. Now, if you are doing just your own selling, then you don't need to put CL, for example, would be my first and last initial. You could just put one, two, three, four, and just use some type of infinity number system like that. The reason I'm using CL is because we actually do listings for other clients as well. So we have a warehouse full of different boxes and SKUs. So this is just going to be how I determine what's mine. Once that's done, just double check that I am in the correct category, which is men's shoes. Then we wanna make sure the brand is right. I'm gonna make sure that my data is gonna be updated to what I have, which is a size 14, men, athletic black. Now, because this is copying someone else's listing and that was based on a size eight, here's where you can miss some stuff as far as the additional attributes. So UK shoe size seven, I'm going to just clear this out I could update this but I actually forgot to take a photo of that tag so I'm not quite sure what that is yet I'm gonna scroll down we are pre-owned now for condition I currently do not have a template put together that's something that's on my to-do list for this week so all I'm doing right now is just copy and pasting that title then I put any additional information which in this case is going to be pretty beat up pair of shoes so all I'm putting here is just the bottom of the shoes very worn please see photos for condition now for pricing, I'm going to just start at $29.95 with best offers on. Give that about a week or so and then drop it down to $22 to $25, somewhere in that range. Again, this is just being transparent. This was not a great buy. That was an oversight on my part. Now for your delivery or your shipping settings, this is going to just be personal preference for each of you. Personally, we ship Monday through Friday, so one business day handling time. Typically, we do free shipping on most items. In this specific case, I'm actually not going to do free shipping and I'm just going Going to try to grab five bucks back to help with that shipping cost these will realistically cost me about 10 depending how far they go I'm not going to run promoted on this one from here i want to make sure we have immediate payment on and we are good to list now once that's listed i can just simply click over here and update my status from photos to listed and then this Airtable setup is categorized by SKU, so it's all in that order. So this is gonna be the very bottom one, which was number 68. And one thing I actually forgot to mention is I'll actually just paste my full title back in there too. So again, this is just what I've been doing. I've gotten pretty quick at this setup, even though there's many uh, places I can speed things up and make it more efficient. And then from there, we just rinse and repeat the process. This is what the finished product would look like on the back end with our five listings that are up. So what happens now is we play the waiting game for these to sell. What I'd like to do is I monitor inventory weekly. So I'll go through and adjust these prices down if nothing is selling. I might throw on some um, promoted listings. I can run a markdown sale. There's different ways to help move this. So there you go, folks. That is the literal start to finish of sourcing the product, getting it cleaned, getting it photoed, and getting it listed. Um, of course, on the back end is shipping, which we'll do future videos on. But I've been talking to a lot of newer sellers, even people who have not even listed anything yet, but that really want to start. And the question is, where do I start? How do I start? What's the step one, step two, step three? So hopefully this video helps 
literally get you in the game if you're not already, or it helps clear up some questions that maybe you already had. If you enjoy the style of video, I could do many, many more of them. We This is literally what we do full-time all day, every day. So if you want to see more content like this, hit the like button and drop a comment and just let me know if you like this style of content. We can definitely produce some more for you. And if you tuned in for this entire video, I just wanna say thank you for your support. Um, you being here watching these videos, helps keep us motivated to keep producing content, um, to know that it's actually out there floating around the internet, helping people make more money in their life. That's our game. That's what we love. That's what we're going to continue to do. So thank you so much for your support and being here with us. And also, if you are not following us on Instagram, that's our home base for content. YouTube might be one or two videos per week, but Instagram is where we are posting daily content. So follow us over at The Side Hustle Network. Have an awesome rest of your day. And if this video did actually help you get your first listing up, please comment and let me know. I would love to be able to uh, reflect back and see that this video impacted some people.